Good evening everyone. Today we are going to talk about leptospirosis. And uh, as we all know, leptospirosis is a zoonotic disease. It's basically caused by the spirochete uh, leptospira. And uh, it uh, usually you see a spike of leptospirosis occurring during the monsoons, especially with the uh, clogging of the drains and uh, flooded roads with water and sewage water. For example, I just want to give you this example. A two-year-old girl presented with fever for three days, vomiting for a day, hepatomegaly, she had elevated liver transaminases, thrombocytopenia, there was leukocytosis, her hemoglobin was 14, which is pretty high for a two-year-old girl, and an ESR of 20 with a normal creatinine. So when you have this kind of a child who presents with fever with thrombocytopenia during the monsoons, there are a lot of differentials that we consider and uh, the differentials that we consider are uh, infections. So the commonest would be some bacterial infection like sepsis. Malaria is a possibility, but in this child hemoglobin was 14, so it seems a little less likely. Dengue is a plausibility, especially with hemoconcentration. Leptospirosis can also come in a similar fashion. And if you're staying in an area which is endemic for the typhus, then you think of scrub typhus or Indian tick typhus, rickets cell fevers. Other pro diseases that can come with fever, thrombocytopenia and hepatomegaly, you keep in mind autoimmune diseases, malignancies and HLH. Now, if we look into the commonest infections, that is your malaria, dengue and leptospirosis, how would you differentiate? Whenever you have a child with fever and thrombocytopenia, you check for the hemoglobin and the PCV. If there's hemoconcentration, think of dengue. If there's anemia, think of malaria. And if the creatinine is high, then you think of leptospirosis. Now, why is the creatinine high in leptospirosis? We'll talk about it a little bit later. So how does leptospirosis present? Most of the patients come to you as a viral fever. They'll come with fever, body ache, thrombocytopenia, vomiting. There will be deranged liver enzymes. The most important thing is they have non-oliguric renal failure. So don't forget to check your creatinine in patients with fever during the monsoon's time. Some of them may have meningitis and uveitis. So this is what we used to see originally as how leptospirosis used to present. It Earlier was also called as Beale's disease. I'll come to that later. But what is leptospirosis? It's an acute febrile illness caused by the bacteria, the spirochete leptospira. It's a zoonotic disease. These leptospira are present in a lot of mammals, especially rodents and rats. And these animals excrete the leptospira in the urine, which can survive in the soil for weeks. These animals can excrete the leptospira for months, and these leptospira can survive in the soil for weeks. And when humans walk in this soil and uh, when the mucous membrane or the skin abrasion comes in contact, these leptospiros, uh, uh, sp leptospires can then invade into the skin and the mucous membrane and cause the problem. Now, how does it cause a problem? The leptospira can itself release a toxin, can cause capillary leaks. Leptospira can affect the tissues and cause ischemia, especially of the kidney and the liver. And later on, after a few weeks, it can cause immune-mediated problems, especially hypersensitivity reactions, of which uveitis is one of the commonest thing. Now, uh, if you look at epidemiology, uh, the areas which are very high endemic for uh, leptospirosis are the Caribbean islands, Central and South America, Southeast Asia, especially India, Pacific islands. And in India, leptospirosis was actually first reported in Andaman Islands in 1930s. Subsequently, it's been reported from Orissa, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. And now it's pretty endemic and it's reported to occur every rainy season in areas where there's flooding and poor sewage drainage, especially the agricultural areas. What are the types of leptospirosis? There are uh, seven pathogenic species of leptospira and more than 250 serotypes. There are a lot of species of leptospira that are non-pathogenic to humans. The, of the ones that are most uh, pathogenic to lept, uh, humans, leptospira interrogans is the commonest. But if you look at the serotypes in India, we, you have L. andamana, L. pomona. So you have these various six, seven types which are common in India. 
usually once you get a particular serotype a uh, natural infection you are going to get a lifelong immunity with that specific antibody theoretically infection by other serotypes is still a possibility though rare now what happens when the leptospira enter into the human system there's an incubation period of around 2 to 20 days these leptospires have a predilection for the kidneys and the liver directly they can injure the kidneys especially cause acute tubular necrosis immune mediated complexes later on can cause uh, interstitial nephritis as i told you polyuria is one of the feature of uh, leptospirosis especially non oliguric renal failure and that's because of decreased reabsorption of sodium by the proximal tubule due to reduced expression of the sodium hydrogen exchanger 3 in the liver you can get cent- centrilobular necrosis with proliferation of the kupfer cells the toxin can disrupt the endothelial lining of the blood vessels leading to capillary leaks and hemorrhages so how would a patient with leptospirosis present in 10% of the individuals it can cause renal and liver dysfunction with hemorrhage known as wheels disease or icteric leptospirosis it can also severe leptospirosis can also cause multi system organ dysfunction in the form of pulmonary cardiac or cns affection but remember non oliguric renal failure is one of the characteristic of the systemic disease so the common symptoms include fever headache myalgia the headache is classically bitemporal and there is retro orbital pain conjunctivitis is one of the hallmark of the disease and 10% of the patients may develop severe leptospirosis the renal involvement is seen in all phases and renal failure can range from 50 to 79% but remember it's non oliguric so if we look at the way it's been uh, described is you have a monophasic or biphasic phase usually it's biphasic so it starts with the acute septicemic phase which lasts for a week where you may uh, get leptospira in the blood or the tissues followed by an immune phase that comes 1 to 3 days later and this immune phase your antibiotics are not going to work so if you look at uh, clinical types of leptospirosis you have anicteric you have icteric and you have severe anicteric is the commonest milder form fever myalgia patients don't have jaundice icteric is the wheels disease in which you have jaundice there may be involvement of the other organs and severe is with uh, hemorrhage especially pulmonary hemorrhage acute renal failure multi organ and ARDS what are the laboratory features you will have slightly elevated liver enzymes maybe in hundreds not more than that hypokalemia is a feature because of renal wasting hyponatremia may be a feature thrombocytopenia with elevated pt and uh, there may be leukocytosis with neutrophilia and esr may be elevated How do you diagnose leptospirosis? Uh, you can do it by culture, you can do a PCR method or you can do ELISA. Now, culture is little difficult to do because you need specialized media, but in the first week you may isolate leptospira from the blood, the urine or the tissues or the CSF. PCR is usually done in the first week and it's more sensitive than culture. After the first week, you could use the serological test. Remember urine for uh, leptospira PCR may remain uh, positive for many many weeks because the leptospira excreted in the urine for some time. So of the serological test you have the MAT which is the microscopic agglutination test, the ELISA, the IHA test that is the indirect heme agglutination test. Usually in practice we do the ELISA test because it's easier to do. We do a dipstick rapid test or an ELISA. Now remember the IgM antibodies come early may be present for almost 2 months after infection and they, you could have IgM positive in low titers for years together IgG antibody is erratic and may not be detectable f- at all or may be detectable only for a relatively short time so how do you interpret the IgM data so very high IgM titer in a single sample is consistent with leptospirosis Uh, MAT is considered as the gold standard, but MAT uh, problem is that it's not available everywhere. So you will be able to use this MAT only from an epidemiological point of view, because it uses a, a plenty of antigens from different serotypes. Now, since IgM can remain positive for years together, 
uh, how do you diagnose leptospirosis so fain uh, came up with this uh, criteria which he developed for who for diagnosing of leptospirosis and he gave this criteria as clinical data epidemiological factors and uh, laboratory factors and a presumptive diagnosis of leptospirosis was considered if the score was more than 26 the problem with the frain criteria is that uh, it is not very uh, specific so it has a high negative predictive value i'll come to that later with the various studies so the clinical criteria had uh, headache fever conjunctival suffusion meningitis muscle pain uh, albuminuria as one of the criteria and a scoring for that epidemiological criteria was contact with animals or contact with contaminated water and laboratory findings were basically based on culture or on the mat and uh, You, you needed to have part a or part a and b score of more than 26 or all the three part score of 25 or more to make a diagnosis of leptospirosis now the problem with the fain criteria was that its validity is still unproven it's got a specificity of 188.9 specificity of 80.2 positive predictive value of only 30.8 so you can't make a diagnosis on the basis of this criteria and a negative predictive value of 98 so percent so you actually can rule out leptospirosis but you can't make a diagnosis of leptospirosis and this has been shown in two different studies that uh, the negative predictive value is very high but the positive predictive value is pretty low so in 2012 the fain criteria was modified and what was the modification done was that the original criteria had only mat which is a complicated test not available easily so elisa and other rapid tests were included in the laboratory criteria pulmonary hemorrhage which is an important complication of leptospirosis was now included into the clinical criteria and uh, the presumptive diagnosis remained the same uh, you had part a and b more than 26 or total of more than 25 So this is the modified fain criteria and you can see in the laboratory now you have serology which contains elisa you have rapid tests which are now included and even a pet seira that is now included and what is included in the clinical criteria is the last one that is a hemoptysis and dyspnea now what is the treatment of leptospirosis the treatment is basically antibiotic therapy supportive therapy and you have to monitor the renal hepatic and the cardiac function closely antibiotic therapy is going to work only during the phase when the leptospira is directly causing a problem so it works best within the first 5 days and after day 8 of symptoms when it's become a more of an immune related problem there's actually no benefit of antibiotics the leptospirosis are susceptible to beta lactams macrolides tetracycline fluoroquinolones and streptomycin so for severe disease you prefer injectable penicillin you could also use third generation cephalosporins like ceftriaxone and ceftriaxone for mild disease we could use amoxicillin ampicillin doxycycline if a child is more than 8 years of age and these are this is the table that depicts the various antibiotics their doses and the indication so as you can see the intravenous doses of benzyl penicillin ceftriaxone and ceftriaxone is basically used for 7 to 10 days and is given in patients with severe infections erythromycin or azithromycin is considered only in patients with penicillin allergy and you have oral ampicillin amoxicillin and doxycycline for mild infection again duration is for 7 to 10 days now what is important is all the newer uh, therapy or novel therapy that is being tried out in leptospirosis and one of the thing is probiotics uh, apparently lot of uh, diseases are caused by gut inflammation or gut dysbiosis and in a murine model where uh, they injected the animal with leptospirosis they found that pre treatment with live lactobacillus plantarum actually gave lot of protection similarly saccharomyces boulardii has been found to increase the humoral immune response associated with dna vaccination and that may offer a novel strategy to improve vaccine efficacy and bacillus subtilis 
has shown to demonstrate antagonist effects on various leptospira zero groups so there is a lot of data now coming up on, on use of probiotic therapy it's still not the standard of care but quite promising results in the pipeline uh, there are also use of bacteriophages against uh, leptospirosis but uh, it's still very much in the experimental phase at the moment so how do you prevent uh, leptospirosis basically you avoid wading in water that is contaminated by rat urine and uh, any role of corticosteroids uh, in patients especially with pulmonary complications in the immune phase there have been trials and meta analysis that has looked at uh, methylprednisolone and its administration in severe leptospirosis but it's still too early to say how effective it is going to be and we need randomized control trials to say the role of steroids in leptospirosis now there are a few synthesized that is uh, artificial compounds and natural compounds which have leptospirocidal activities among the synthetic compounds uh, doxycycline and azithromycin combination has been found to be very useful especially if you give azithromycin once a day for 5 days and then there are these novel astididones uh, which are also useful in uh, leptospirosis but what is more uh, uh, interesting is that you have certain natural compounds that have natural leptospirocidal activity uh, one is your kalmeg leaves that is the green chiriata leaves and the extract of that is found to have uh, spirocidal activity against various leptospira species it's a plant that is uh, present in the indian subcontinent and easily available then the borneo olive which i've shown that uh, image of the borneo olive which looks like a black grape that also has been found to have spirocidal activity against uh, leptospirosis and the regular palm that we eat uh, the beetle leaf and the chloroform extract of the beetle leaf is found to have good uh, activity against the leptospirosis in fact uh, they looked at the mics against the leptospira and they found that the mlc value was twice as high as compared to the mic so they found that uh, it has got a good bactericidal effect against leptospirosis however word of caution that please don't use beetle leaf in patients with liver dysfunction or liver disease it's contraindicated the other thing is a natural herb called as bringraj and uh, again they tried it against various leptospira species and they found that the spirocidal activity has got lot of uh, efficacy against uh, the spirochete now what about prophylaxis so in adults you could give doxycycline in the dose of 200 mg per week or in children you could give amoxicillin 30 mg per kg per week as prophylaxis and how long do you continue till there is an exposure during that particular rainy season so you could give it depending on the duration of exposure so this was in short about leptospirosis and lot of exciting new things in leptospirosis that i've discussed about the vaccination it's still in various research mode nothing active currently from the vaccination side as yet available thank you very much